Hi, so in this video we're going to do some uh, multi-threading work with Unreal. So this is uh, getting a long-running task to run on a background worker thread so that it doesn't stall the game. So in a real game this might be some long-running piece of procedural generation, you know, something like that that's going to take a while and we don't want to throw up a calculating please wait screen on the player. Um, for some common tasks like level streaming, Unreal actually has built-in ways of handling that on separate threads, so we don't need to write our own mechanisms for that but like I say there will be times where you may need to do it so what we're going to do we will write a simple function which does a long running calculation we'll go for the obvious one which is calculating prime numbers that's what most people tend to use when they're um, uh, demonstrating threading so we'll have like a little platform on the floor over here somewhere and when we run over it it goes and works out the first however many thousand prime numbers and then we'll run it on the game thread, so you can see it will actually hang the game until that's finished. And then we'll run it on a, a background thread, a worker thread, so you can see the difference. But basically, the game will just carry on chugging along while all these calculations happen in the background. Okay, so this is a new first-person uh, template. It's Unreal 4.16, although most versions, I think, should work, unless they change the API too much. Um, we're going to start off, we need a bit of C++ because you, this is something you cannot do exclusively through Blueprints. I mean, we're going to call our functions later on through Blueprints, but we have to start off with some code. So um, to the file menu, new C++ class, we'll base this on actor, because eventually we're going to re-inherit this into a Blueprint and we want to be able to place it into the world. And we'll give this the name um, Prime Calculator because it's basically going to have a long-running function in which, guess what, calculates the first, like I say, however many thousand prime numbers we ask it for. We'll hit create on that. Now, Unreal will go ahead and start building that new class for us. It will launch Visual Studio, and that's going to take a while. So I'm, what I'll do now is just skip the video forwards to when this is ready and Visual Studio is open. So see you in a sec. Okay, so we have um, Visual Studio loaded now with um, Unreal in the background. There you go. So all this is is the um, C++ slash prime calculator that we just created. We've got the CPP file with um, a couple of functions in the constructor, the begin play function, the tick function, you know, standard and real stuff really. And then we'll have the header file with um, you know the class declaration in. Now what we actually need to do is add another class to the header file to represent um, the task that we want to run on a background thread. So what I'm going to do is just separate this up. I should point out, this is only one way of doing multi-threading. I mean, there are a number of ways of doing this in Unreal. This is just one way. So the task that we want to run on a worker thread, we need a class to represent that. So we'll start a new class here. Class prime search task, I'm going to call it. And that needs to inherit from a piece of Unreal Engine called f non abandonable task. Which you might find Visual Studio like will act as it will put like the red pen under it, so it doesn't know what you're talking about. I think if you inst yeah there, if you install Visual Assist, I think this problem goes away. But the built-in IntelliSense just doesn't like certain things about this. There may be a way of configuring it so it's fine, but I just haven't uh, come across that. Right. So what do we need in our task? Well, we need standard stuff like constructor. The constructor is going to take an int which represents the number of primes you want it to search for. So our long-running task is going to find He's going to keep on testing increasing numbers to see if they're prime until it's found prime so, uh, prime count, I'll call it actually. Until it's found prime count amount of primes, then stop. We need a destructor, so. Yeah, so just, you know, standard C stuff. Now, what the destructor is going to do is just log a message. When the task, like, what should happen is this task, once it's finished running, should automatically get deleted by the engine, so we don't need to worry about deleting it ourselves. So we'll put a log message in there just to make sure that, that, uh, that we can see that happening. Now this next bit is some part of the engine that you absolutely have to have, otherwise this will not work at all. So um, just bear with me while we put this in. We need to start off with a force in line tstat id. Be careful of the capitalization as you put this in. Get stat id const. And then this function just needs to do a return quick declare cycle stat the class name so prime search task and then another again just another part of unreal stat group thread pool async tasks there okay 
And what we need after this then is a couple of functions. There's one function that we absolutely have to have, which is this do work function. Now the do work function will automatically get called. Um, oh, one second. It's made a mess of this line. Yeah. And semicolon. Right, there we go. That should be okay. Right, so the do work function will automatically get called as the function that the worker thread will run. So we don't need to manually do that, but this function does need to be here. And then what I want is another function called do work main because I want a way of running the same long running task on the main game thread, just so you can see how long it would hang the game for if we didn't have this kind of threading system going on. Okay, so with that done, we now need to create, well, the bodies of these four functions basically. Uh, now normally this is where you'd go right click on this and have it create the function for you but for whatever reason the right click menus in Visual Studio don't show up on my videos. So what I'm going to do is do this a longhand way where I just copy those two, the construction destructor, we'll make the same kind of dividing line in the CPP file, paste those two in and then of course we need to just put the the name of the class in front. Like so You can get Visual Studio to do this for you but for whatever reason the menus and things for that just don't show up on video for me, so we'll leave it like this. And what does the constructor need to do? Well, it needs to store this in a variable. So let's go back over to the header. We'll add a variable uh, int32 prime count. Let's we'll call, we'll call it prime count without the underscore and give it a capital P. Yeah. So all this does is take that prime count variable and store the value of the incoming uh, function parameter, constructor parameter in it. The destructor then, like I said, this just wants to log a message so that we can see when this task is deleted. So that'll be UE log, log temp, we'll put it in. We'll do it as a warning so it shows up in yellow, stands out a bit, and that can just be text, task finished, yeah, and that's all that needs to be. The other two functions then. Right, so let's go and get, in fact, we can do it from here. So if we just go prime search task, do work. So this is gonna be the long running function that actually does the work that, does the work that we don't want on the main thread that we want the worker for. It's gonna test, like I say, so many prime numbers, find out if they're, Complain about oh right yeah I haven't put the yeah there you go that's going to test increasing numbers to see if they're prime and once it's found a certain amount of them stop running at which point the task will end so we're going to need an int to say how many primes have we found start that on zero then we need a while loop which can say while primes found is less than what did I call it prime count keep testing basically we want an integer to store the number we're currently testing for primeness, if that's a word. So current test zero and one, obviously. And what do we do in this loop? Well, we'll start off by assuming that every number is prime and we'll just change this Boolean flag to false. If we find otherwise, the way that we'll test to see if current test number is prime is by attempting to divide it by every number greater than half of itself and then if any of those numbers divided evenly we know the number's not prime and then we can just carry on so like if uh now we need a loop first of all for int i start off on two like one will divide any number obviously so we don't need to test with one there so i will increase from two to half of the current test number and what we'll do each time, we'll say if current test number mod i equals zero, which if you haven't used this before, what that does is divides current test number by i and gives you the remainder. And if that remainder is zero, then we know the number was divided equally, so it's not prime. So we've got is prime equals false. And then we may as well break this loop because once we found one number, what once we found one number i that divides current test number there's no need to keep on testing increasing values of i because we we already know the number isn't prime if only one number divides it. Okay, so when we get down here, 
the loop ends either naturally or because it gets broken, but either way around, is prime will either be true or false by the time we get to this point. If it is true, we have found another prime, so we can go prime found plus plus. And then I, what I want to do down here is every 1000 primes that we find, log a message so that we can see this task, um, you know, we can see the progress of this task as it goes along. So if primes found divided by 1000 gives a remainder of zero log a message. So again, that will be ue underscore log temp give us a warning and that will be text um, primes found colon percent i and then percent i will get overwritten with the actual value of primes found there. Okay, uh, one last thing, once we get down here, no matter what happened above, whether we found a prime or didn't, we need to increment current test number to go up. So current test number will keep increasing every go around the while loop. Eventually that will break, which means this function will end, which means the task will end and we should automatically have the destructor called. Okay, so now all we need uh, we Well, yeah, there's a do work main function, isn't there? There's this one that I added. So if we go back over here, in fact, let's grab that. Paste that in there. So what do work main is going to do is just immediately turn around and call the do work function. Remember I said we can't call um, do work ourselves. That will get, do work will be called automatically on a background thread by the engine. In, in a minute, you'll see how we set that up. If we want to call do work on the main thread, we need to call it. So we need another function which can call that function for us. It seems a bit long winded, but, but trust me, this will work. So now, how do we call these two functions, do work main and do work from, um, well, from blueprint basically? Well, what we do, leave our prime search task class alone for a second, go back up to the prime calculator class that we added in the first place, and we'll add two functions to this which we're going to be able to run from blueprint. So one's going to be called run prime task and that will take you know the number of primes that we want to search for and if we want to be able to run a function like this from blueprints we need to put a little macro above it called u function brackets blueprint callable uh, and again be, be careful of the capitalization as you do that and what i'm going to do is copy that line copy those two lines even and just make another version of it called run prime task on main which we'll use so this one will call do work on a background thread so you'll see how you do that and this one will manually call do work through that other function that we added on the main thread so this one should hang the game while it completes and this one should just blast away in the background and not bother us so let's add those so back in the cpp file back in this um prime calculator class just add the class name in there yeah, so how do you spawn a background thread? Well, what we need to do is create, in brackets, a new f auto delete async task. So this is why the destructor will automatically be called for us when the do work function ends. If it wasn't an auto delete task, we would need to keep a pointer to the task around so that we could delete it ourselves later on. But doing it this way, we don't need to. So prime search task, anything we need to pass on to the constructor. Uh, yep, just number of primes. And then what we do with this is tell it to call a function called start background task. And what this does, it gets the engine to, um, well, first of all, create this task class, this task object, add it to a pool of tasks that need to be completed. And then when a worker thread is available, it will call the do work function. And then as I've said, when, the work, when that ends, it will delete the task for us. So we don't need to worry. Again, all of this red pen, is something that Visual Studio puts in, whether, whether you've got the code right or not. Okay, so now finally, we've got the other function we added, the other blueprint function. Oops, copy that, paste this. This is going to be that run prime task on main. And this is where we're going to do it manually. So rather than calling, rather than using this, you know, rather than using this background task system, we will manually create a pointer you know, as you would create any, you know, any points to an object in in um, C plus plus. So we'll make our own um, object of this class with a pointer to it. Then through that pointer, 
we'll call the do work main function. Then when that ends, we will manually delete the task. So that should be all we need to do in C++. So what we can do now is head on back over into Unreal. Just make sure I've got everything saved. Yes. Then hit the compile button here. Then what also doesn't show up on the video is the com compiling C++ code um, pop up down the bottom here. You should be able to see that on yours. That will hopefully finish without any errors. Yep, compile complete. So what we need to do now then, so we can play, what we want to do is play, like I said at the beginning, place a couple of platforms into the world where when we run over them, it calls these um, these functions for us. So let's make a new blueprint. The blueprint is going to be based on our prime, ser uh, prime calculator, sorry, class. We'll call this something like BP prime calc. Open the blueprint. And what we want in here on a couple of things, we'll make a cube. So add component cube and that needs to be changed in size a little bit that can be we want to be a little platform so if i make it two in x two in y point one in z then we'll add a box collider there we go and resize this so it's kind of sitting on top does it come underneath yeah it does so if we move that up a bit and then resize it to fit the entire cube so what, as a guess, what's 64? No, not quite. We'll make it 100. Oh, there you go. 100 by 100 is perfect. Then what we can say is when we run into this box, when we start overlapping this box, either call, that's back over in Visual Studio, either call this function or this function, depending on whether we wanted to run on the main or a worker thread. So back in Unreal, over to the event graph, get rid of all this. We don't need it. We'll create another variable called another boolean variable. This is called run on main question mark, and we'll make that instance editable so we can set it through the um, editor in a second. Uh, get our box, scroll down to its events, and what we want here is the on component begin overlap. So when we start overlapping this collision box, do something. What what we want here is a branch. The branch will check the value of this boolean, run on main, see whether it's true or false. If run on main is true, we will call that run prime task on main. See, those, those are those two functions that we said were blueprint callable. So that will call run prime task on main, and we will ask that to search for the first 50,000 prime numbers. If run on main is false, we will just call the run prime task function, which is the version that starts a background. You know, it calls that start background task thing for us, which will kill the worker thread. Again, to search for the first 50,000 primes. Compile and save this, and now we should be able to test this. So, if I drop this platform into the world here, create a copy of it. So, hold Alt, click and drag to create a copy. The right hand one will leave run on main unticked. The left hand one we will tick it. So, what should happen now is, oh yeah, we need to have the the output log so we can see all of our messages, don't we? So, we go to Window, Developer Tools, Output Log. So, yeah, we've got the little message log down here. Uh, we run over the right-hand platform. It should start a background task, and we'll see this filling up with found, you know, so many thousand primes. But it shouldn't interrupt the game. That's the thing. If we run on the left-hand platform, it should run the same task, but do it on the game thread, which will hang everything. So let's see. So if we run over this one. Yeah, they can see my message log filling up with that long, the progress of that long-running calculation. The game's still running perfectly. We're not being interrupted at all. Um, so this is where, you, you know, if that was some long-running task to do with procedural generation or AI or, you know, what terrain generation, wherever it is you needed doing, do it as a background task like this, and it will quite happily run away in the background without ever interrupting the player. I mean, there are some restrictions as to what you can and can't do with these background tasks um, that are kind of beyond the scope of this video. I just want to show you how to trigger them in this. So we'll wait for that to finish. So we've got the 47, 48, 49... Found the first 50,000 primes, and you see there we get the task finished message from the destructor. Now if I run over this platform, and there you go, everything's frozen, because the main thread, which should be kind of playing the game with us, if that makes sense, is stuck off in that do work function, finding all the primes. So um, I'll wait until this gets back to me, and then I'll end the video. You, um, As usual, if there's anything you want to know about Unreal Engine, drop me a comment. Ah, there we are, finished. So drop me a comment if there's anything you want to know about Unreal. If it's something I know how to do, I'll make a video about it if I can. And thanks for watching.